Hi, this is Phil at Simply Rhino, and in this video I'm going to look at 3D Paint, which is a new feature in Keyshot 11. With this great new tool we can paint directly onto our 3D geometry, and I'm going to demonstrate some methods by which we can create the dirt, corrosion and scratches that you can see on this metal casting that I've modelled in Rhino 7. This is the starting point in Rhino. If I switch to the shaded mode, you'll see that I've separated the model of the casting into two parts. The raised up detail is on a separate layer, which I've called Paint High, and the remaining geometry is on a layer called Paint Low. And, although it's not essential to split the layers like this, doing so is going to help me get the dirt texture right into the corners of details like these. So, in other words, I need to be less careful when I'm applying the paint as the layer separation is acting as a mask. So let's move this into Keyshot 11 and I'll do this via the live linking plugin. This will open up Keyshot and our starting camera position should be pretty close to that of Rhino. Because I didn't apply any materials inside of Rhino, Keyshot is going to use the object colour and therefore the layer colour that I established in Rhino. The first thing I'm going to do in Keyshot is to change the environment. I'm looking for something fairly plain, not too reflective, and grayscale so my colours are not affected by the background. And for now I'll choose 3 panels straight 4K. I'll change the background to a single colour, in this case white, and I can just type C to do this. If I go into the Scene Browser and Model Sets, I can see the two Rhino layers here, and if I expand these, I'll see the individual parts on each layer. If I go to the top level here, which is the whole of the geometry, and then go to Position here, I can use the Snap to Ground button to place my geometry onto the Keyshot ground plane. I'll then just manipulate the view a little and zoom into a local area. I can then go to the Camera tab and create a new camera and I'll call this Render before saving and locking the camera. In the Lighting tab I'll choose Product and if I then switch back to the free camera and rotate the view a little you'll see that this lighting mode helps me to see the detail a little better. However, when we're working with 3D Paint I'll turn on Performance mode in order to speed up the responsiveness of the paint brushes. Next, I need to add some materials. So I'll go to the Materials browser and I'll use a Paint Material. Then I'll click on the Scene tab so I can see the model sets and I'll drag Paint Gloss Red onto my Paint Low model set. In Properties, I'll edit the material and change the name of this to Gloss Red Low. I'll then go back to the Scene tab and I'll repeat the process adding Paint Gloss Red onto the Paint High model set and once again I'll change the material name this time to Gloss Red High. So in summary we've got the same material applied to both model sets or Rhino layers in the scene but I've used a different name to identify which material is applied to which layer. So I'm ready to start to modify each of these with 3D Paint and I'm going to look first at applying the dirt and for ease of viewing I'm going to turn off the visibility of the high areas. There's a little bit of confusion in here with the shadows but we won't worry about that too much. I'll pick one part of the object and go to Edit Material and then Textures. Here I can apply either a colour, bump or opacity texture. And if I right click inside of Colour here and go to Textures, I can choose 3D Paint from the drop down list. I'll see my 3D Paint properties here and I can make some changes to these. I'm going to make the brush colour black and I'm going to reduce the opacity of that brush to about 65%. If I click on Paint now, I'll see the brush preview in the live view. And if I want to reduce the size of the brush, then I can do that here. And I can choose 
scene units or pixels for this. And here's my 3D paint. Now, for something like a dirt texture, rather than using just a round brush here with a reduced opacity, we can actually use a texture as a brush. And this will make the dirt look a bit more uneven. If I go into the library here and textures, and I choose a splatter texture here, this one for example, splatter 06, I can drag the texture across here and drop it into the brush shape. I'll reduce the size, let's try 5 millimeters, and I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit more, so let's try 45%. I'll also increase the spacing a little bit to 20%. So to look at this, I'll click the paint button and I'll see a preview of the brush, and before I start painting, I'll switch to performance mode, the shortcut for which is Alt and P. And this will speed up the display and increase the responsiveness of the brush. Now I can simply paint in my dirt texture and as I'm not working at full opacity then I can darken areas by going over them again. So this is all very simple so far but it's also pretty crude. I can switch to an eraser here which will have the same brush shape and opacity as the brush so it's quite subtle. And Whilst it's difficult to be too prescriptive about the process here, personally I find it easier to apply some paint and then gradually knock this back with the eraser, creating a kind of gradient effect as I go. I'll stop paint for a moment as I've realised that the glossy reflections on the paint are not helping here. So I'll go to Library and Environments and I'll choose a simpler grayscale one. Maybe the Startup Balanced 4K one. This should make things easier. So now I'll go back to paint and I'm still in eraser mode here so I'll continue knocking back this dirt. If I want to see the texture with a bit more realism then I can temporarily come out of performance mode and turn on the paint high model set. It looks a little dark in here so I'll go back to performance mode and knock back some more of this paint. So again, this is a personal thing, but I find it easier to apply paint or texture in a fairly blocky way and then reduce or knock this back with the eraser. So, I'll skip forward now, having done a few more areas, and if I go to Camera and unlock the current camera, you'll see that I can rotate the view whilst I'm in paint mode by holding down Alt and the left mouse button. So I can gradually work around the model, painting in the dirt as I go. For these circular areas inside the raised part of the casting, then I don't need the texture brush as the simple round brush will suffice. It's very easy to remove the texture from the brush and I can just right click on the texture here and select delete and then I'll go back to my normal round brush. I'll just reduce the size of that brush and then I can start painting in the dirt. As previously, I'll work by roughing in some colour and then knocking this back with the eraser and I'll adjust the size and the opacity of the brush as I go. Let's look next at adding some corrosion and I'm going to use a bump texture for this. So I'll go into the material and then to the texture tab and then to bump and then I'll click in Textures and select 3D Paint. So the same routine as with the colour texture. If I click inside here, I'll see the 3D Paint texture and, as before, I'll change the brush to a splatter texture. And again, I'll use the same splatter texture as I did for the colour texture and then I'll set the size, opacity and spacing. Now, if I start painting, I'll get this nice corrosion texture where I have the appearance of something bubbling underneath the paint. One of the things I did in my Rhino model was to make sure that these surfaces were joined together so that the texture is contiguous on either side of this rope pattern. Just as with the colour texture, I can use the eraser to modify the painted areas and if I wanted to completely remove an area without undoing, 
Then I could switch to a round brush with a high opacity and remove the corrosion completely from part of the model. Also, remember that from time to time you can come out of performance mode to get a better idea of how the 3D painted effects are looking, as the bump in particular will look much better with a more sophisticated lighting solution. Next I'm going to look at how we can create the 3D painted texture where the paint has been rubbed off, exposing the bare metal underneath. And I'm going to use a slightly different approach for this. I'll go back to the Scene tab and select the Paint High model set. And then I'll edit the material. At the moment we have no textures applied. And I'm going to go to the Labels tab and I'll add a label. I can choose from Texture, Material or Video and I'll select Material. Next I'll change the material type to Metal and I can see the result in the Live View window here. This is a label that is applied over the top of the red paint. If I want to edit the properties of that metal material then I can go into the Material graph and if I double click inside of the metal component here I can make changes in properties on the right here. I'll change this to a measured material which will initially be gold but of course I can change this from the drop down list and in this case I'll choose chromium. I can also make changes to the roughness and other parameters should I wish. So at the moment the metal material is completely visible. If I now go to the textures tab in my material I can apply an opacity texture and here I can choose 3D paint. As soon as I add in the opacity texture the label is now transparent and effectively hidden. And by brushing in a texture I can create opaque areas where we can see the material. Initially I'm going to use a round brush and I'll set the size to 2mm, the opacity to 65% and I'll reduce the flow to 80%. Now if I pick paint and start painting you can see that I can effectively rub off areas of the red paint revealing the metal underneath. Now of course I'm actually doing the reverse of this but the effect is the same. That brush might be a little too big but don't forget I've got the eraser here too so I can replace some of that red paint if necessary. So I can carry on with this exposing small areas of metal as I go. Of course I could use a textured brush to apply a number of scratches in one pass or a very small brush and a scribbling action to create small local scratches. Let's look now at the finished version and you can see that there's a mixture of different textures involved particularly with the scratches and corrosion. However the dirt, corrosion and paint removal has been done essentially with the same simple methods I've explained here. I've added some roughness to the red paint material and made a few lighting changes to improve things as well. In this second example you can see the individual scratches created by scribbling with a small brush. As I said earlier in the video the techniques that I've shown here aren't really prescriptive as such and with 3D paint there's a lot of flexibility for working in different ways so it's likely that if you use 3D paint then you'll quickly develop your own workflow. So that's about the end of what I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave any comments below. If you found this video useful then please hit the like button and remember that to keep up with the latest developments in Rhino and Keyshot then you can subscribe to this channel. At Simply Rhino we're authorised trainers for Rhino and Keyshot so check out our website for more details. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.